Good morning, or depending on when you're listening to this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I've always taught how to voice for radio, so I've made a podcast all about the Pokemon trading card game. And you're listening to PTCG Radio. Now, this week we've got a little bit of news to get through, and there were some regional championship results, but it's becoming slightly harder to find them this week. The usual website I go to has not um, put up the results yet. And although there is some information coming out around and about from various websites, uh, it's not yet been collated in a meaningful manner. So I can still tell you some trends, I can still give you my, you know, what I've seen going around a little bit, but what I'm not going to be able to do is give you a huge rundown of all the different decks and add it to my totals from last week. Hopefully, that will be something I will be able to do next week. So going into the news for this week, and it really is slim pickings in a lot of ways, but there is a little bit we can talk about. First of all, it has been confirmed that the promo for Phantom Forces will be Bronzong, and it will have different artwork. I believe we knew that already, but a picture has surfaced and can be seen on PokerBeach.com. This is good because Bronzong is going to be a good Pokemon. We imagine it's going to be one that people are likely to be using a lot. So being able to get it with alternate artwork as a pre-release promo is, I would argue, an undoubtedly good thing. Oh, I should also mention today we're going to be largely talking about Don Fan and Evil Tal, so lots to talk about there. Now, there's a cool little thing that's happening in Japan, and unfortunately it is only in Japan at the moment. They are going to release Pokemon Scrap Code Cards. These are going to be in booster packs of Ga- Gaia Volcano and Tidal Storm. That's the Ruby and Sapphire remake, which is coming out the cards of course coming out in Japan soon which will be our February set in the UK maybe we'll get them as well but as of yet no word as to whether they're coming in the UK and essentially there's going to be 50 different ones of these cards and they've got cool images on the front so they're cool for collectors Um, and when you get these as a code and you put it in and you get free stuff in Ruby and Sapphire the games so if you put one of these codes in, you get a shame into using your game. Three, you get a nugget. Five, you get ten super potions. Seven, you get a Keldeo. Ten, you get um, ten balls. I believe they are. Might be luxury balls, I forget. If you put five, 13 in, you get five rare candy. 16 in, you get a Victini. And 20 in, you get a Master Ball. Master Ball, of course, being that item which automatically catches any Pokemon. And that you are, unless you use nefarious purposes. Otherwise, limited to having one per game. So, kind of a cool little crossover there between the TCG and the VGC. Now, I know a lot of people don't necessarily play the video game that play the card game, but I know there's a fair bit of overlap, and there's presumably enough to make it worthwhile. The only other piece of news we have this week is that the Pokemon Training Card Game video game for the Game Boy, which was released way back when, is going to be released in the USA. And it's actually been around for a while now. It's coming out on November the 6th, I believe. No, sorry, November the 13th. Um, Now, it was released in Europe and Australia in July. And I didn't get a copy of this because I already have two cartridges of it. One because I had it way back in the day. And a second one because I lent it to a friend and just bought a new one because I wanted to play it, and then got one back from a friend. It's a really fun game, and if any of you are wondering what it was like playing way back in the day when these cards were first released, it's a fun little game. It allows you to play. It's not a very kind of in-depth, involved game. It is just you play the card game. It's not like Pokemon where there's the battling, but there's the overworld and the running around and the interactions with people and all of that. It's just a card game, but... If, ladies and gentlemen, you are excited by the thought of playing the card game using pretty much just the old um, kind of first two or three sets against computer-controlled opponents, I would go for it. One thing I will um, warn you about is that when it was released in the UK, at least, it didn't have online functionality. didn't have multiplayer functionality. So if you were to buy the old cartridges, and like I say, I have two of these now, if I were to find two Game Boys on a link cable, and I actually have two Game Boys on a link cable lying around, I could actually play two-player with the cartridges. For some reason, that was stripped from the Virtual Console download. It is, of course, a download for the 3DS Virtual Console. This was stripped from the... um, Virtual Console release in the UK, and I assume the rest of Europe and Australia, and... I would imagine it would be the same in the USA as well. So no multiplayer, but a fun little one-player game if you want to look at what 
um, the games were like way back when. So, like I say, we don't have a huge long list of the winners for these. But what I have seen is I've seen a few incomplete lists. And like I say, I'll try and get you to them next week. What we do have is the British Columbia Regional Championship. Now, this was posted by Tookpack on the threads on the topcut.net of the previous regional championship results. So I have no reason to not believe this, but it's not something which I can verify at this time. But he's given us the top eight after Swiss in the standard format and at the end. So that's building in the extended format from top 32 and top eight. So at the end of top eight, we essentially had, sorry, at the end of um, Swiss, and this is only out of the top 32, but of course, you know, we, we've only got the top eight, not the top 32. But of course, decks nearer the top of the top 32 are going to be better, more viable decks and decks that are creeping into top 32 at 28 to 32, for instance. And in the top eight, we have three Donphan decks. One Verizian, one Lugia, one Seismitoad, one Plasma. So one Verizian, one Lugia, one Seismitoad, one Plasma, one Fighting, three Donphan. And this backs up everything that I told you on last week's podcast. Evil Tal is out of vogue at the moment. Now, from some of the lists I've seen, I believe there was one at Fort Wayne, Indiana this last this past weekend. In fact, I know there was because a friend of the podcast did very well at that. More on him in a minute. But essentially, we can see that Evil Tal, although still viable, is out of favour. Verizian Genesec, still good. Speed Lugia, still good. Seismitoad, still a fringe deck. Fighting, still a fringe deck. And Donphan potentially becoming the best deck in the format at the moment, which I find very interesting. I'm going to be talking about that in great detail later on in the podcast today, and I will be posting a deck breakdown using some one of the good decks, which um, has done well at the regional this past weekend. So more on that in a little bit. Moving into top eight, we see four Pyro. Two Verizzi and a Plasma and a Fighting. And this shows, again, exactly what I told you in the last two weeks. Pyro, presumably, Pyro Seismitoad. Again, these are information posted by different people. I don't know how they're sorting out the decks here. I don't know if they mean straight Pyro or whether they mean Pyro Seismitoad. But again, if we look at the trend over the past couple of weeks, we can presume it was probably Pyro Seismitoad. Because then it gives you an out to stuff like Fighting. And also, it can help you to slow the game down. The only game, the only games really where Seismitoad is really bad is against um, decks like, you know, Verizian Genesect, and Pyro owns that. Pyro also pretty much auto wins you Plasma unless they've got an answer for it. And that's why Pyro is so good. It basically auto wins Verizian Genesect, it basically auto wins um, Plasma, and it can be pretty good against Fighting as well. It's not good against Seismitoad Garbodor, but that's generally making waves in standard, not expanded format. By the way, if I ever say extended, that's wrong, it's expanded format. But it's worth actually looking here at the positions because, of course, once it gets down to top eight, we actually see a full-on tournament. So making top eight but going no further, we had Brian Hill with a fighting deck, Richard Reynolds with Plasma, Sam Chen with Pyro, and David Cohen with Verizian. Given that the top eight was half Pyro, we can pretty much assume that unless David... Well, we can definitely assume that unless David Cohen played a Verizian mirror match, he played Pyro in top eight. And you don't want to play Pyro with... Excuse me. You don't want to play Verizian Genesect if you're the Pyro player. In third and fourth, we had Joey Gaffney with Pyro and Kevin Krupnik with Verizian. And in first and second, we had Chase Maloney and Alex Cock both playing Pyro. So not only did Pyro take four of the top eight spots, but it then made three of the top four and both of the finals. So not only did Pyro make top eight in, you know, large numbers, but it went through top eight. Verizian had two um, decks in the top eight, but one went out in top eight, one went out in top four. Pyro had four in top eight, three in top four, two in the final. And then, of course, the winner was Pyro. That 
shows how good Pyrrhal is. But then again, there was a bunch of Pyrrhal and a bunch of Arisian Genesect going on in the top eight. If there was a bunch of Seismitoad, Pyrrhal would have been ripe for the picking. And remember that these regionals, although larger than states and cities, so with a wider overall metagame, still do see a metagame of sorts. For newer listeners, by metagame, I mean the decks which are generally played. So you may see a much higher amount of Pyrrhal in... Um, British Columbia, for instance, in Vancouver, than you would see in Fort Wayne. So maybe in Fort Wayne there was far less Pyrrhal because there was more Verizian Genesect. So, you know, that, that's something to be borne in mind. But this is essentially what we're saying. If you're playing in the regular format, the standard format, you can really go for Donphan or Verizian Genesect or Evil Tal or Seismitoad Garbodor or Fighting or Plasma. They're the good decks with seemingly Donphan and Verizian Genesect moving up to the top of that list. When you get to Expanded, it's a far narrower sense and it's really just Pyroar, Verizian Genesect and Plasma which are making waves. There's a bit of Fighting, there's a bit of Seismitoad, but generally those Free decks, and by Plasma, it's pretty much Speed Lugia. They are the free decks that are utterly owning when it comes to the extended format. The one thing which I find interesting in these formats is that when you get to expanded format, you're seeing the same kind of decks just with a few extra cards. Verizian Genesect is still being played, but people are chucking in a couple of Enhanced Hammer, and that's about it. Pyrrhal's still being played, and it's probably got a couple, and from the lists I've seen, any road, the only real card they're adding in there is maybe a level ball or two, and a couple of Tropical Beach, and that's about it. So these decks are staying very, very similar. Speed Lugia, again, the only real change people are popping in is that they can have, you know, Thunderous and um, Plasma Energy, uh, not Plasma Energy, Prism Energy. Now, the big change here is the kind of meta game the decks people are playing. So although Verizzi and Janet, you know, although Pyrrhal, for instance, isn't changing very much, you know, just a couple of tropical beaches, whereas it's having to go against loads of kind of evil Tau Garbador in standard and Don Fan, etc., which are bad matchups for Pyrrhal, potentially. When you get to the expanded format, these Pyrrhal decks are going up against Verizzi and Genesect and Plasma, which couldn't be more favourable matchups. So Pyrrhal is viable in Standard, and it's viable in Expanded. But it's generally doing better in Expanded, not because there are all these amazing cards that make it a more viable deck, but because the metagame shifts in such a way as to make it viable. And if I'm saying the same kind of stuff as last week, it's because it's not changing. Now, friend of the podcast, Alex Hill, has popped a post on Verbank City, trying to fill out the top 32 decks from Fort Wayne Regionals. And I would like to point out that it's not a complete list, although there seems to be 31 out of 32. But I'm going to leave it for a little while to see how we get. What we do see, however, is a lot of Donphan, quite a lot of Verizian Genesect, a few Evil Tau decks, a couple of Kangaskhan Aromatist decks, which is interesting given that Donphan can actually one-hit that. And that's basically about it. Donphan, Verizian Genesect... Bit of Evil Tail, bit of Seismitoad, couple of Kangaskhan, little bit of TDK. The metagame is is kind of bringing in on itself, and we're almost getting to a stage where we've got two top tier decks, Verizian Genesect and Donphan. Now, when it comes out to which one of them is better, I would give the edge to Donphan. I'll go to that in a minute. But the more this goes on, essentially, the the smaller we get, the easier it is to get a defined metagame. To give you a silly example, or not even a silly example, but if we get to a situation where basically everybody's playing either Pyro or it's playing Verizian Genesect, that makes Speed Lugia very, very good. Yes, I know Don Fan often hides behind a Sigalith wall, more on that in a minute, but if you put enough Lissandra and Pokemon Catcher in, then essentially you're going to be able to you know, beat down these Donphan decks, taking lots of prizes, and yeah, they can maybe drop a Deden or something to knock out your Verizian, or uh, your Lugia, if they've got the right cards at the right time, and they've got the right combination, blah, blah, blah. Although free energy on a Lugia plus a muscle band on the Den equals 160 damage, 80 times 2, which is not enough to get a KO. And let's forget, not forget, the Lugia takes 4 energy to attack, and discards 1 when it carries out the attack. So Deden is not necessarily a great counter for Lugia, especially against a fresh Lugia, it's not going to do it. But a Deden with a Silver Bangle would against a free energy Lugia. 
But they'd have to have a Den and an energy and a silver bangle popped in the active position to turn after you took the KO. And as I've mentioned on the podcast several times before, Speed Lugia's pretty good against Rizzi and Genesect. So maybe there's an option there. So, ladies and gentlemen, things that you should be bearing in mind. Now, I would like to use Alex Hill as a further example here, partly because he's a friend of the podcast, one of the people that's been listening and tweeting at me ever since I started it, but also because he happened to do quite well this past weekend. And as he did quite well this past weekend, I think it's worth having a quick look at how he did. And the thing that really interests me about how he did was that he went about... um, using basically the two decks we would like. Now, the good news is that a lot of people have been posting their completed deck list on um, the Pokemon, the Facebook group, Burbank City. Now, I'm going to be doing a bunch of deck breakdowns on my YouTube channel, PTCG Radio on YouTube. You can just search for it, or you can go to youtube.com forward slash user forward slash PTCG Radio, when I will be breaking down these decks. I've already done a deck breakdown of an Evil Town deck, which did well at Houston Regionals, uh, in a couple of days, I will be doing a deck breakdown of a Don fan deck, which did well at the past regionals. Maybe Alex Hills, maybe somebody else's. And I will be going through um, a bunch of other decks, kind of as they become appropriate. So all those things are um, coming up in the near future. But if we use Alex Hill as an example, day one, he uses Don fan. He ends up as the fourth seed. Day two, he changes to Verizian Genesect, and he ends up coming um, third place overall. And that goes exactly with what I've said. We start off by going with Donphan, very viable deck, and then we finish up by going with um, Verizian Genesect. One thing which I do love is that both the Donphan decks I've been looking at over the past couple of days... Both of them run 14 draw supporters and a couple of bike as it happens. I cannot tell you how ecstatic this makes me. Anyone who listens to my podcast or has looked at any of my deck breakdowns on my YouTube channel will know how much I've been fighting for people to play more supporters for consistency and people are listening. And that makes me very, very happy. Okay. So. Moving on through then. There are two decks I want to talk about. Now the first one of them is Evil Town. And I'm going to leave that till the end. It's not so important. Two weeks ago it was very important. And then I couldn't look at it last week because there were other regionals results. And now it's not as viable. We're going to look at why that is. But I want to start off with Donphan. Donphan is a Pokemon which I absolutely adore. Anyone who has listened to my podcast for a long period of time knows this. And the reason is Donphan Prime... I played as a speed deck back in Nationals 2011, and it is, to this day, my favourite deck I've ever played. Now, Donphan Prime essentially did 60 damage for one fighting energy and 10 to all of your bench. It's the exact same attack that the um, Doug Trio from X and Y had, and it did, I think, 90 damage for free energy. It wasn't a great second attack, but you could use it in a pinch. And back then we had Expert Bout, which did 20 extra damage and gave you 20 more HP, at the cost of giving up two prizes, and it had an ability like Bouffalant's Boofer ability, which reduced damage by 20. Back then, turn one evolutions were allowed with things like Broken Time Space or Rare Candy. No longer anymore, but you could using either of those cards. Broken Time Space just allowed you to evolve whenever you wanted. You know, even if you'd only just put it down. So you could have gone basic, stage one, stage two, boom. You have a stage two in play on turn one. That would be hellish nowadays. And essentially, you just got Don Fan out and hit for 80 very, very quickly. And I loved that deck. Back when nobody knew who I was, long before PTCG Radio. Well, maybe a year before, but not even that much, actually. But before PTCG Radio, when nobody really knew who I was as a player, before I'd had any success, I piloted that to top 16 at UK Nationals. And that's kind of my first little success. And then I beat the following week at a league at a battle road what would now be a league challenge i actually beat the uk nationals masters champion the guy who won nationals when we were playing both playing exactly the decks we were playing at nationals 
not that that mattered, I got knocked out in top 16 and he went on to win. But it was a moral victory. So that's the background of why I love Don Fan so much. This current Don Fan is very, very different. In fact, it's very much like a Gengar card that was around about the same time. Now, I am going to do a deck breakdown of Don Fan it probably in the next two days on my YouTube channel. But I'm going to go through it now because the deck breakdown, I'm just looking at one list. Here I'm looking at the deck as a whole. Don Fan has two attacks. It's from Plasma Storm, but it might as well only have one attack. The attack we use is called Spinning Turn. It does 40 damage and allows you to put Don Fan to the bench. Now there is a second attack called Wreck, which does uh, for two fighting and a double colorless. It does 100, well, either 80 damage, or if there's a stadium in play, 140, and you discard the stadium. But of course, that's not particularly good. 40 damage isn't good. But we've got strong energy, the energy which adds 20 damage to the attack of fighting Pokemon. So now it's 60 and you pop to the bench. And then we've got Muscle Band, which does an extra 20 damage. Well, now it's 80 and you pop it to the bench. And then we've got Fighting Stadium, which does 20 more damage to an EX. Now it's 100 damage for a single energy and you pop him back to the bench. That, ladies and gentlemen, is an absolutely astonishing attack. It is fantastic. And essentially, that's what you do. All game, we call it a hit and run deck. Um, we had a Shadow Skip Gengar in the past, and there's actually a new Gengar coming out in uh, Gengar EX in Phantom Forces, which is going to do a very similar thing. Except it does 60 damage and poison, and it can't take a count of things like Fighting Stadium or Muscle Band. So, it's a popular kind of thing. Now, you can use a second attack to get one hit KO on, on the X's. It does if you put Fighting Stadium in play, then you're doing 160 if you discard the Fighting Stadium. As a rulings query here, it does the extra 20 damage, and then you discard the Stadium. Essentially, you add the 20 damage to the attack, then you discard the Stadium after the attack has resolved. Essentially, it's not maybe entirely correct, but that's the way it works. I've been asked that before, it does do the extra damage. Just like Landorus does do the extra damage if you use a strong energy when doing the second attack. So, we can use that to one hit KOEXs, and all you need to do is put a muscle band or a strong energy, and boom. It takes four energy, but you can use a double colorless to lower that attack. So we need some Pokemon to pair here. And here are the Pokemon that we are going to use. There are a bunch of things. First of all, the dragons. By the dragons, I'm referring to the Reshiram, Zekrom, and um, Kyurem that have Outrage. They've all got the... and you're not playing anything but fighting energy and double colourless, so you can't use a second attack. All of them do 20 damage, plus 10 more for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So if you've got 60 damage on the Pokemon, then you do 80 damage for a double colourless energy. But it's typing. Reshiram's a fire Pokemon, and Zekrom's a lightning Pokemon, and Kyurem is a water Pokemon. So if you're playing the mirror match, you'll want to try and get Kyurem in the active. If you're playing Evil Tau, you want to get um, Zekrom in the active. And if you're playing against something like Frisian Genesect, you want to get Reshiram in the active. Although the two really good Don Fan decks that had success this past weekend, the two that I'm considering using as a basis for my winning deck breakdown, neither of them played Reshiram. And this is why it's worth going through on the podcast. On the podcast, I can give you all the options. On the winning deck breakdown I'm going to do on my YouTube channel, I'm just looking at one particular list and giving my opinion on it. Essentially, the podcast is giving you more information about the deck as a whole, but the winning deck breakdown on the YouTube channel is giving you a list you can use to start testing with. I.e., watch them both. You'll get all the information you need. So there's the dragons, but there's other Pokemon you should use instead, and we refer to these as the Safeguard Pokemon, the Suicune and the Sigilyph that have the Safeguard ability, which prevents all effects of attacks, including damage done to that Pokemon by a Pokemon EX. Now against Pyro or Donphan, this is no good, but against something like Plas, uh, excuse me, against something like um, Verizian Genesect or Speed Lugia, it stops them attacking with their main attackers because they can't hit the Sigilyph. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a huge advantage. And you basically switch into whichever Pokemon you like. Now, the other option, the two other options, both of which have fallen out of favour massively. By the way, you would generally play Sigilyph over Suicune, because although it has 10 less HP, it has a retreat cost of 1, not 2, making it the favourable option. Now, there are two other options which have fallen out of favour, which people haven't been using, but you can. 
First of all, Trevenant. Trevenant is a stage 1 Pokemon, takes up more space in your deck, blocks trainer cards. Now, can also be hit by anything, so it's certainly not... That's why it's fallen out of favour. People don't need trainers as much as they need to be able to hit you. Sigalyph, um blocks attacks from EXs, screwing up your opponent's game plan. And... Um, so that's that one. Or, for instance, you know, Zekrom is hard to one-hit KO with an evil tal, and then you can get the return KO using Outrage. Trevenant just sits there, and it doesn't help you to attack, and it doesn't stop them attacking, but what it does do is it blocks them from trainers. The other one is, of course, Pyro, where you don't attack with a Pyro, you attack with a Donphan, but every turn you attack with Donphan, switch into a Pyro, and then your Pyro sits there, unable to be hit by basic Pokémon. This, I would say, is a very viable option on maybe day two, an expanded format, where Verizian, Genesect, and Lugia are so huge, but it's less of an issue, really, in the regular format, because most decks nowadays play a Pyro counter. So, it's an option. I leave it up to you, ladies and gentlemen, whether you want to go ahead with this. And that's generally how the deck works. Now, there are other options here, but essentially you want to switch into a Safeguard Pokémon or you want to switch into an Outrage Pokémon. You can use Trevenant or Pyral, but they're Stage 1s and they they don't really often stop your opponent attacking, although Pyral could, and they don't get you any closer to attacking and winning the game like the Outrage Pokémon do. So that's probably why they've fallen out of favour. But there are other options here. You're playing fighting Pokemon, so you could put something in like a, a Landorus or a Lucario. Now, people aren't doing so at the moment, but you've got everything you need to do so. One card that people are playing is Horlicher. Now, Horlicher is a basic Pokemon, and it's only got 70 HP and blah, 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 blah. It's got a rather fantastic attack. This is a card I was very cool on for a long time. I am now big on this Pokemon. Now, it's got an attack, Shining Sight, not affected by weakness or resistance. Sucks if you're going against something like a Thunderous, but excellent if you're going against something like a Lugia or an Evil Tal. Now, its attack does not hit non-EXs. But it hits EXs for 60 for a single energy. If it's a strong energy, that's 80. You put a Muscle Band on, it goes up to 100. If you've got a Fighting Stadium out, that's 120 on the first turn of the game for one energy. On a one price Pokemon. That, ladies and gentlemen, is awesome. The other thing Horlicher does is it gives you free retreat. So, what you could do if your opponent can't attack or you don't think they can attack, you switch into a Horlicher, and then if they do get an attack off, they hit your Horlicher. It's not the end of the world, they're not hitting a Don fan. But if they don't get an attack off or they get an attack off and don't kill your Horlicher, then you can free retreat into a Don fan and, and keep going along those lines. Now there's other things you can do here. You can play a Lunatone to give you, um, this is the basic Lunatone, the, um, the, the one from, I believe it was from Plasma Storm, I want to say. Oh, was it from XY? No, it was the one from um, Plasma Storm. You could play the one from XY because it allows you to draw two cards and it's only got a retreat cost of one. But the one from Plasma Storm is better because it allows you to look at the top two cards of your deck and put them back on top of your deck in any order i.e. it allows you to draw what you want the following turn. It helps to give a bit of consistency to the deck. And you could play that as a one-off. Because you're playing Donphan and switching into stuff, and then you want to retreat and put Donphan up again, you're going to be playing a bunch of switches and float stones anyway, so playing a free retreat Lunatone maybe is not the end of the world. So, you know... And that really is basically all there is to the deck. You probably want to play a few catching cards, Lissandra and Catcher and things like that. But essentially, you want to almost every single turn, you want to be using Smash Turn. Because it's it's amazing. It's a fantastic attack. It's attack, oh sorry, spinning turn. Smash Turn was a very similar attack that um, Kyogre EX had, doing 30 damage and switching back to the bench, I believe for two, a water and a colourless, though I could be wrong. Could look it up, don't want to. And then, the thing I love about Donphan, now I've played against a bunch of Donphan decks, and I've started testing with, a Don, with Donphan decks, so it, it's a deck, I mean, I love Donphan, so of course I'm testing with it. If I turn up to regionals with Donphan, don't be terribly surprised, ladies and gentlemen, because... As much as I don't like playing the number one deck, I like to try and counter the number one deck. Probably the reason why I never make it to Worlds except by grinding in. And that was on the year where there was one massive deck to be countered, and I built a counter deck and 
played Darkrai all day, which is how I grind it in. It's not my style to play in a number one deck and just go, mirror match, sod it, let's go, let's have it. I love Donphan too much. But one thing I've learned is that that second attack is lethal, because essentially you never use it. But if you've got, say, a strong energy and a regular energy on Donphan, you are threatening 160 damage. You put a fighting stadium and a double colorless down, and all of a sudden, with one strong energy, one fighting stadium, no muscle band, and then three other energy, you are doing 180 damage. What that basically means is, if my opponent is building up a Don fan on the deck, I, and they get down to two prizes, I've basically lost. Because at some point, that Don fan's going to come active and kill me, and I need to make sure that Don fan doesn't do that. So, yeah, Don Fan decks, they're just good. Quite frankly, Don Fan decks equals good. I mean, that's, that's about all I can really tell you about that. I think I've given it, um, you know, I think I've given it to you in, quite frankly, as much detail as is, as is reasonable to do so. So, that's Don Fan. The other deck I think is worth having a quick look at here is um, Evil Tal. And I'm not going to go into this in quite as much detail as I planned to previously, because it's less viable. But just very quickly, it's Evil Tal EX. Now, I've talked about him before. He's got Evil Ball, which does a um, dark and a colourless 20 damage, plus 20 damage for each energy attached to him, or the defending Pokemon. So you've got two energy on Evil Tal, they've got two energy on the defending, you're doing 100 damage. 20 for each energy is 80 plus 20 generally. You put a muscle band on there, you're up to 120 very quickly. That energy adds up. But most of the time, in the same way you don't generally use Donphan's big attack, you don't generally use this with Evil Town. You use Y Cyclone, especially with Dark Patch having been rotated out, at least in standard format. Dark energy in a double colourless does 90 and allows you to move an energy to your bench. So you move a double colourless back to your bench. Now I have done a winning deck breakdown and played a game with said deck on my YouTube channel. And I know I keep mentioning that guys, but go and subscribe. It's good stuff, I'm told anyway, and I think it is. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you get your friends to subscribe. As long as people keep watching, I'll keep making the videos. So please get over there and subscribe. But essentially, you do 90 damage, pop a DCE to your bench and keep going. Evil Tower's a good attacker, and it can be paired with lots of stuff. You can pair it with Seismitoad, you're already playing DCE, and that allows you to slow the game down and, you know, by blocking trainers and doing a bunch of damage. Or you can pair it with Mewtwo to give you a big attacker that kind of... It's Evil Ball minus 20 damage, but it's for a DCE rather than a dark and a, color, and a double colourless. Uh, excuse me, a dark and a colourless, so it, it's a more accessible attack. You can pair it with Garbodor to turn off abilities, give you a game against things like Pyro, help you match up against Rizzi and Genesect. You'll want to be playing lasers here. You can play it with Raichu, so you've got a counter for the Mirror and a counter for Speed Lugia. And they're the general ones people tend to go with. The other deck which has come about fairly recently is Evil Tower Hammers. Now, Enhanced Hammer has been rotated out, but Crushing Hammer, which allows you to discard any energy, not just a special, if you can flip a heads is still in the format. So the theory of that is that you bash away with Evil Tower while getting rid of your opponent's energy with Crushing Hammer. Evil Tower's a pretty fast deck anyway, but you slow them down by playing Crushing Hammer. You also play the non-EX Evil Tower, which does 30 damage for one energy and allows you to attach a dark energy to your bench, i.e. 30 damage plus dark patch, or Thunderous' Raiden Knuckle, but on an Evil Tower, and that gives a bit of speed to the deck. The other thing about the deck is that Evil Tal, the non-EX, has 130 HP and a resistance to fighting. He is a real pain in the neck to kill. I still think Evil Tal decks can hold up against Donphan, although I think you need, you know, Catchers and Lissandras to get around and kill those Donphans pretty quickly. But I would reckon Evil Tal is actually more viable than it was recently. More on that in a minute. But it's hard to kill, it's a non-EX Pokemon, and then you build up Evil Tal to either y Clone or Smash with Evil Ball. Now, a couple of weeks ago, this exploded in week one of regionals before contracting massively in week two and three. It was still played in week two and three. It still saw some success in weeks two and three. But it saw a lot less play. And the reason it saw a lot less play is because people were prepared. So here's essentially what happened. I don't know. This is my best guess. 
Week one of regionals roll regionals rolls around. I could cut that out. I have the editing ability. But I'm gonna let you I'm gonna leave that in so you get a more authentic podcast experience. Or a more shambolic one. It's up to you to decide. And essentially, week one of regionals rolls around. That's a real tongue twister. Week one of regionals rolls around. Boom, nailed it. And everybody doesn't know what to play. It's the beginning of a new season. We've had a couple of league challenges, but nothing major. Evil Tower was good last year. We fall back on Evil Tower. A lot of new decks haven't come out yet. Don Fan isn't played by many people at all. And a lot of people that want to play it don't know the best build yet. Uh, Rizzy and Genesect still big, but Evil Tau can take that down. Seismitoad's quite big, but why Cyclone beat Seismitoad quite quickly? Because essentially, turn one, you put a Dark on Evil Tau. Turn two, attach a DCE, do 90, switch it to the bench. Turn two, a second 90, Seismitoad goes down. Then you start building up an Evil Ball, and unless they can maybe take you out of a Mewtwo, they're going to lose quite quickly. Evil Tau's good against Seismitoad. And less people are playing Raichu. Evil Tower's good against fighting decks because when um, Furious Fist comes out, it's a fighting-centered set. Everyone's excited about fighting decks because it's got all the support, so everyone plays fighting. Evil Tower comes around, big damage for just a dark and a double colorless, knocks out these um, fighting EXs quite quickly, and has resistance, so it's much harder for them to kill. All of a sudden, Evil Tower does very, very well. So... With Evil Tower doing very, very well, everybody then starts to counter it. And in week two, we see lots of Verizian Genesect, some with hammers to slow down Evil Tower. Because remember, there's no Dark Patch now. Some with Raichu to counter Evil Tower. And all of a sudden, we've got these decks to beat Evil Tower. Don Fan comes around, and by focusing on cards like Deden, that's a card I should have mentioned with Don Fan, although I don't like it so much. Watch the video I played with the Evil Tower deck. It's called something like First Game Houston uh, Evil Tower Houston Regionals 504 in Swiss versus Don Fan, the first game I played with the Evil Tower deck that went 504 in Swiss at Houston Regionals, and I talk a lot more about Deden as a counter. But essentially, if I do Y Cyclone and move a DCE to the bench, I've got one energy on Evil Tower, the Den does 40 damage. The Den puts a Muscle Band on, the Den does 80 damage. If the Den instead puts a Silver Bangle on, it does 100 damage, and then it dies. It's not that great, ladies and gentlemen. Again, Zekrom can be used as a counter, though, and that's hard to kill, so maybe you've got a Catcher effect, maybe you've got a Y Cyclone, and they'll put no energy on it, so it's going to take loads to Evil Ball it. Maybe you can pull off a Y Cyclone with a Muscle Band, Verbank, Laser... And that'll do 140 and kill the evil uh, Zekrom, but otherwise you've got to attack into it. Or your opponent puts up a Sigalith, and then you can't attack it with um, Evil Tal EX, so you have to put regular Evil Tal out, which does 30 damage. Maybe you can do 80 damage with um, an Evil Tal with a Muscle Band and a Laser and a Verbank, but then they can just retreat the Sigalith into a Don Fan, hit you again, put a different Sigalith up, or even the same Sigalith, or something like a Zekrom. You see where I'm going with this. Don Fan decks in Week 1 maybe weren't built to counter Evil Tal, but come Week 2, they are built to counter Evil Tal. And Rizian Genesect starts countering Evil Tal. This is what happens when a deck gets really good. And in the near future, Don Fan will probably become a whole lot less viable because people build counters for it. And I'm going to give you an example of that in just a second. But I've already told you about Speed Lugia. So, what can Evil Tal do to improve? And what can we do to beat Don Fan? And the answer to both of those questions is gusting effects. Catcher, Lissandra, etc. We need more of these. Think about it this way. Don Fan wants to hit us and go back to the bench and leave an unattractive Pokemon active. I'm not calling these Pokemon ugly. I'm saying they're Pokemon that are unattractive to hit. Either they block our attacker or we attack and they hit us back for weakness. So maybe we end up going silly. Maybe we go free Lissandra, free Pokemon Catcher. Evil Tal, when played basically, is a very, very simple deck. Evil Tal, bunch of energy. Doesn't need a huge amount. These are dark and a double colorless to attack. So we play maybe free Lissandra, free Catcher. Now I haven't tested these deck. I haven't tested these decks out, but this essentially would work as long as you could get set up. If they leave a um, 
Zek Rom active, then you attack it if you've got Muscle Band Verbank Laser. If you don't, you play a Catcher or a Lissandra and you kill a Fampi or you kill a Donphan from the bench. Every turn, you aim to kill something. Other, essentially, you ignore the active. You win through gusting effects. And you maybe play a Palpad, so you've got five Lissandra and three Catcher to use through the course of a game. Sooner or later... They're going to leave something active that isn't a Sigalith. Now, don't get me wrong. You can even you can use a non-EX Evil Tal, put free energy on that. It's got an attack that does 100. That will one-hit KO a Sigalith. But that's fairly awkward. But if you're capturing and Y-Cycloning every turn, then you're going to buy a couple of turns to put energy onto Baby Evil Tal on the bench, and that's going to allow you to build him up enough to attack. Essentially... The way we go the last couple of weeks, the Evil Tau decks aren't beat to build Donphan. The Donphan decks have been built to be Evil Tau. But if you play many baby Evil Tau to counter Sigalith, and, you know, uh, maybe free Verbank to play with your laser to maximize your chances of one hitting a KO, one hit KOing a Zekrom, as I've just mentioned, and you play a bunch of gusting effects to kill stuff on the bench, all of a sudden their Donphan's then may be doing 60 to 80 damage a turn. With the resistance, it's hard for Donphan to one-hit KO an Evil Tal. But if you catch them up and why soak them with a Muscle Band Verbank Laser, you are one-hit KOing the Donphan. And let's not forget that sooner or later you'll probably be able to gust up and kill a Fanpy, which only has 80 HP, so you can kill it with a regular Y Cyclone, and then that means it's going to be much, much easier. Um, don't forget, of course, that... Uh, an evil tower with, say, free energy on, which is the same as Y Cyclone would need, an evil ball will do 80, plus whatever energy's on the Don Fan, plus um, any muscle band, Verbank laser, etc. So if you switch to evil ball instead, you can kill those Don Fans pretty quickly. And that's essentially what you do. I think you can make Evil Tau decks that beat Don Fan. I never feel that confident with Don Fan against Evil Tau, but every time I've played it, I've managed to pull out the win. And the reason I've managed to be able to pull out the win is very simply because my opponent hasn't really been prepared. But having said that, when I played my Evil Tau against Don Fan, and again, you can see that on my YouTube channel, he just threw out a Zekrom out of the dead and was just like, I have two lightning Pokemon, I'm going to beat you. And that's not the way it works. That's what I see as a future of Evil Tau. I see it as a deck which plays a third Verbank City Gym and more gusting effects and a heavy line of Evil Tau, and maybe it just plays Evil Tau. Regular Evil Tau, Evil Tau EX, maybe one Dark Ray or two to give free retreat. Now that means you're not playing Raichu for the Mirror, that means you're not playing Garbodor for a Pyro or stuff like that. They are decisions you're going to have to make yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm giving you a hypothetical situation where Evil Tal is then going to have a pretty gosh darn favourable matchup against Donphan, and Donphan's a deck you need to account for nowadays. Frisian Genesect is, has a very difficult Donphan matchup because it can't get through Sigalith. But through a combination of Red Signal and if you put some Lissandra and Catcher in, again, you can get through this. You put a couple of Raichu in to kill the Sigalith and you've got Red Signal and then maybe you can take it down. The one big problem, of course, is that you can't one-hit KO a Donphan very easily without G-Booster. So I've seen people playing one or two Deoxys in their Frisian Genesect. Genesex Megalo Cannon, its main attack, does 100 damage. With a Muscle Band, it does 120. Donphan has 130 HP. So you put one Deoxys on the bench, all of a sudden you're hitting for 130 HP. You're one hit KOing the Donphan, and that is going to take them down quickly. One of the reasons Donphan has done well is because it came around in week one, and people have thought way too much about playing it and not too much about countering it. You play Frisian Genesect with one Deoxys and a 2-2 Raichu, all of a sudden their Sigalith does nothing, you've got a way to kill it. And if they kill all your Raichu, well that's not the end of the world because you've still got your Red Signal and you'd have to use that carefully. And you can still G-Booster if you have to. You put one Deoxys in so that you're able to um, use Megalo Cannon and a Muscle Band to KO the, Deo the Don Fan. And if it's not a favourable matchup, it's a better matchup. Evil Tau puts a bunch of gusting effects in, puts several baby Evil Tau to take down the Sigalith, puts in a third Verbank City Gym to win the Stadium War, and all of a sudden, because most fighting decks tend to play free fighting stadium. So just make sure they, and a 
computer search, lists that I've seen. So you wait for them to put down one fighting stadium and you're going to win the stadium war. They go fighting, you go Verbank. They go fighting, you go Verbank. They go fighting, you go Verbank. All oh, they're out of fighting stadium. Verbank staying put. And then that's a way they can win that. Speed Lugia, as I've said, has a decent um, Don Fan matchup, but has a real weakness to Sigalith. So you either put a Sigalith counter in, or you put a bunch of Lissandra in, maybe three in a pal pad. Maybe two in a pal pad, because you're only going to need to do it three times to get the win. And all of a sudden, you are gusting up and killing stuff on their bench for two prizes, and it doesn't matter that they put a Sigalith active. Not only that, of course... But Lugia has a resistance to fighting. Now we've seen that Horlachar goes through that fighting resistance, so that might be something they use against Lugia. But then the Horlachar stays active because he doesn't go to the bench when he attacks. That gives you something to kill with Lugia. Hopefully you see where I'm going here. Donphan is a very good deck. And there is an argument that in standard format at the moment, it's the best deck in the format. In Expanded, it, it, it's Pyral, Seismitoad, and it's Rizzian Genesect. Maybe with Speed Lugia. They are the decks in Expanded. And I'm not talking much about them today, ladies and gentlemen, because we've hit them a lot recently, and there's only three decks, and we all know how it works by now. If we don't, send me a tweet at the Wasser, or email me at ptcgradio at hotmail.co.uk, and I will, of course, um, you know, get, get on to you about that in due course. But essentially, that's what we do. Donphan is counterable. And that's how we can do so. He's arguably the best for deck in the format at the moment, but he's not without counters, and that's how we go about doing so. Evil Tower was good, but fell out of favour, but I've told you ways we can get around it. Speed Lugia is a deck that I would uh, suggest that you start testing. What this podcast, I suppose, turns into around regionals time is, here are the results, here are the trends, here's my advice. Now, you may well disagree with me, and if you do, get in touch in the ways I've just told you. If you're listening on YouTube, just stick a comment down below. But if you disagree, then it means you're thinking about the format and making your own decisions, and I would argue I've helped you just as much as if you listened to my advice. So hopefully this is useful, but I'm always welcome... I always welcome any feedback, things that I could do better, things that I'm not doing as well, things that I am doing well, things that you like. I've had um, several bits of good feedback by email, by Twitter, etc., from people who who are really enjoying my regionals breakdown and my advice. So, you know, keep that feedback coming, good or negative, I really don't mind. I want to make this as good as I can. So there we go. This week I have taken you through... If not the results of week three of regionals, because they're not as easy to find at the moment, I've taken you through the trends. I've told you the best decks. I've told you my advice. I've told you why those decks are good, why they can be beaten. And we've really focused in on Don Fan and Evil Tau. Hopefully, this has been of some use. Just to finish off, I got a lovely email from Thomas Shaw the other day, a chap who listens with his son in Nashville, Tennessee. Hello to you, Thomas Shaw. Um, lovely email. Thank you very much for that. He asked me if I'm going to do a deck breakdown of Evolutions, given that it's a deck that he knows I've built on PTCGO. The answer is yes. I'm going to do a Don Fan deck first, and I may well do Verizian Genesect next, but an Evolutions deck breakdown is coming. One problem I've got at the moment is that the list I'm currently using is my friend Tommy's card for card list, and I am happy using a list which has been released into the public forum, because people have, have released that, so it's fine me doing a deck breakdown of it. But it's not fair for me to use my friend's list for a deck breakdown if I've not had permission. So maybe Tommy will give me permission to use the list and I can put it up there. Maybe I'll make a new list of my own concoction, because a deck's not a secret. I will use a list of my own concoction and do a deck breakdown of that. But one way or the other, yes, I will be doing an Evolutions deck in the near future. If you've got any feedback for me, tweet me at the Wossy, email me at ptcgradio at hotmail.co.uk, or if you're listening on SoundCloud, WordPress, or YouTube, just leave a comment down below. Please don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, watch some videos, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And if you've subscribed to my YouTube channel, find somebody else too. We're getting dangerously close to 600 subscribers, but there are Pokemon TCG YouTube YouTube channels with a couple of thousand, and given that I've been doing this podcast for over two years now, I don't see why I can't be one of those people. Help me reach my goal, ladies and gentlemen. But I've talked enough today. As always, thank you very much for listening. Look after yourselves until next week. My name's Ross, and you've been listening to PTCG Radio.